Hello and welcome again to another video on number theory. So today I want to discuss about some basic properties or some basic assumptions on the integers but we, that we will assume to be true. Now uh, let's recall that the integers are 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 and so on and they come equipped with a basic binary operation that we call addition. I know all of you, all of you know this, but let's go over some of the basic properties anyways. So we're going to assume without true the following things. So if I have three integers a, b, and c, uh, the first thing that I'm going to assume is that the operation of addition is commutative. So what that means is if I take two integers a and b, the addition uh, doesn't matter in which order you do it, you get exactly the same integer. So the second one is if I have three integers, a, b, and c, and it doesn't matter where I put the parentheses in the first two or the last two, you get the same result. That is called associativity. Uh, the third property is that a zero is the identity for addition. So we all know that, that when you take any number and you add zero, you get exactly the same number back. And property number four, is when you take an integer and add it to the inverse of that integer, you get the uh, zero, the number zero, which is the identity for, for addition. Now, one more thing that I want to mention here is I said that the addition is a binary operation. And what that means is if I take two integers and I add them, then I get again, get an, get another integer back. Now, the integers also have, of course, other operations. So we have the subtraction and the multiplication, which I know you all know, and they're all based on addition, and let's see why. Now, if I take two integers a and b, I can define my subtraction a minus b as a plus the additive inverse of b. So what I mean by that is that subtraction is the addition of the first number and the additive inverse of the second. So that's how you define addition, uh, subtraction in terms of addition. Now, for example, let's see a couple of examples. So if I have seven minus three, so what that means is I have seven plus the inverse of three, the additive inverse. Or, for example, if we had negative six minus eight, that's the same as negative six plus the additive inverse of 8. Now multiplication is also another binary operation on the integers and is defined in terms of addition. It is repeated addition. Um, so this here is the definition. So let's go over the definition here. So if I have two integers a and b, the multiplication a times b in terms of addition is defined in terms of the sign of the first number, the sign of a. So if a is a positive, then you take the second number, b, and add it a number of times. So you add it a times. Now, if the number a happens to be negative, uh, so that means that minus a is positive, we're going to take the second number, the additive inverse of the second number, and add it minus a number of times. Now, if you look at that definition, minus a number of times makes sense because if a is negative, minus a will be positive. So you are adding the uh, additive inverse of b a positive number of times. And the last part is what happens if a is equal to 0. So if the first number is 0, of course, the multiplication will be 0. So that's how you define multiplication in terms of addition. And of course, I know you all know the, all, all of you know this uh, part. All right. Now, let's see an example. So let's say, for, ex for instance, we have 4 times 6. So what I do is I take my second number, which is 6, and I add it 4 times. I added the number of times that it says the first number. And of course, I get 24. In the second example, if you have negative 4 times 6, I'm going to take the, the additive inverse of the second number, which in this case is 6. So the negative, the inverse here, the additive inverse will be negative 6, and I'm going to add it 4 times, which is that 4 that you see there is minus minus 4, which gives you 4. So, 
So that's why you always get it. The addition is always a positive number of times. And in this case, you get negative 24. Now we're gonna assume also without proof that the following things are true, and they are. So we can prove this other properties for multiplication using the axioms or for the definition of the integers or the, natu or the natural numbers. So if I have three integers a, b, and c, I take a times b is equal to b times a. So it doesn't matter what order you multiply them, you get exactly the same thing. Similar with addition, so in this case it's commutativity. So we also have associativity for multiplication. So if I have three integers, a, b, and c, I multiply them all. It doesn't matter if I put the parentheses in the first two or the last two, I get the same result. And in this case, the identity for multiplication will be the number one, the integer one. So if I take any integer and multiply that by one, I get the same integer back. So that's the third property. And the last property is if I take three integers, a, b, and c, and I add b and c and then multiply by a, whether I multiply it on the right or on the left doesn't matter because remember the multiplication is commutative, then you multiply a times the first number plus a times the second number. So that this distributivity property. This is a basically a relation between uh, multiplication and addition here. All right, so what else do I wanna mention? So the properties of addition and multiplication, of course, the ones that we mentioned already, they're also true for the sets, the natural numbers, the rationals, uh, the real numbers, and the complex numbers. There's no difference there, they have the same properties. So the question is now, what is the characteristic property of the natural numbers? Because remember, basically what we are doing is studying properties of natural number and as an extension will be the properties of the integers. So what is the characteristic property of the natural number that makes it different from the others? So that property is uh, something that the others don't have. So n has it, the natural numbers have it, but the other sets don't have it. The other sets that I post, put, put over there. All right, so that property is called the well-ordering principle. Now in this video, I'm not gonna mention what the well-ordering principle is, so because I'm gonna talk about that in the next video, because it's so important, I believe it deserves its own video. But for now, what you need to think about is that the, there is this property called the well-ordering principle that is true in the natural numbers, but it is not true in the other uh, sets. So let me be more specific. So I have here the natural numbers, and in the natural numbers, I have this property. Now the other sets, the integers, the rationals, the reals, and the complex numbers is another, so the other numerical sets. The natural numbers have the well-ordered principle. So the well-ordering principle is true in the natural numbers. But for these other sets, the well-ordered well ordering principle is false. So that's a property that the natural number have that the other numerical sets don't have. By other, I mean the integers, uh, rationals, reals, and complex numbers. Now, something that I'm gonna mention before, before I finish this video is, uh, all the computations we're gonna do in this class are gonna be all base 10, unless I say otherwise. Uh, of course, that is always the underlying assumption in all the number theory uh, classes. The examples are usually in base 10 unless they tell you it's not a base 10, so it's base 2 or base 3 and so on. Now, if you don't know what that means, basically base 10 is just the numbers that we in the Western society agree we're going to represent all the numbers in base 10. Um, so in the next video, as I mentioned, I'm going to talk about the well ordering principle because it, this is a very important property of the natural numbers that will allow us to prove uh, several other things in the natural numbers. For example, the division algorithm will be proved using the well-ordering principle. So that's all I have to say about the basic properties of the integers. Uh, thank you for very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.